All right, how's it going, everybody? Jesse here with Redefine Effects, and today I'll show you how to make this Starship rocket launch real time simulation inside of Embergen. I'm using GPU particles to emit fire using multiple emitters. I'm going to go over a lot of settings, so there's a lot to learn in this tutorial, but it's still very beginner friendly. So let's jump right into it. All right, I'm starting with a blank Embergen scene. We can delete all of this stuff here. We can also turn off the sky. We need this to be a large scale simulation. So our simulation grid has to be much bigger. So under simulation size, we can make the voxel size 0.5 meters and also the voxel count to 500 by 500 by 50. Apply new resolution. So we have a much bigger simulation area to work with. Now we can import our models. So right click import file path and import your Starship model. I found this one online. I'm going to scale it up by 300% and move it slightly higher up and then import again. So this is the launch pad that I just modeled in 3ds Max very quickly. I'll just multiply the scale by 10 and do 120%. That's what I originally did. So I'm looking at something like this. Right, so one of these squares on the ground inside of Embergen is one square meter. So you're looking at about, you know, six meters in between these pillars, right? So we're just looking for something that roughly matches reality. If, if this model is very small, then the simulation is just going to look wrong. So next we just need some emitter. So I'll just right click shape and make a shape primitive. Let's make it a tube. Now by default it's invisible so we need to drag from this and make it an emitter particles and connect that emitter to our simulation emitter. So if I just move it to the side we have some particles being emitted. Let's give the tube a radius of 2.5 meters and a height of 0.5 meters. By default the particles are rising up so we need to go under simulation force and set the buoyancy to zero and this will stop them from rising up and then under emitter initial forces we need to give it a velocity cone we need it to go down so on the z-axis you want to say minus one let's give it a speed scale of maybe eight and so now the particles are born with a lot of speed but they slow down over time and that's because of this volume setting so you can just drag this all the way down and now the particles are going to maintain their velocity I also don't want them to have any speed limit, so you can just increase the speed limit all the way to the maximum. That will make them even faster. And now we just need them to die much sooner. So under life, I'll just give them a life of 0.08 minimum to 0.08 maximum, right? So they just live for a very short amount of time. And if you have a hard time seeing them, you can go under shape, increase the scale multiplier so they're just bigger. And the cone angle is too wide, right? They're just going out in a cone and we need them to go out in almost a straight line to get that nice flame. So for the cone spreading, I'll just lower that almost all the way to zero. So let's say maybe five degrees. And finally, we need to just emit some fire out of these particles. So injection, let's set the fuel injection to 100% and the flames injection to 100% as well. But now the flames are not being given any speed from the particles. So that's what the velocity here is for. If I set it to 100%, the fire is given the same speed as the particles, but you can actually go even higher. So in my case, I went to 300%. Turn off render particles and we can crank up the temperature as well to 8000 and just move this right under our starship here. Cool. So that's a good start, but we want more resolution in this simulation. So again, simulation node, simulation size, upscaling, I'll set that to times two, apply new resolution. And now we're going to get some more detail in the fire. We also need the fire to collide with our launch pad. So I'll just drag from the launch pad geometry and say collider and connect the collider to my colliders in the simulation node. And my launch pad is floating above the ground, so I just need to move it down. And now we're getting some nice collisions with the pillars. Now Jenga FX is completely reworking how the collision solver works, and we're gonna get some much better collisions in the future, but this is what we get for now. So these flames are not enough for what we're trying to do. So I'll copy this shape and the particle emitter one more time, connect it to my emitters, grab this one, and just rotate it 
almost completely 90 degrees to face outward. Now if it starts behaving too slow for you, you can always just turn off the upscaling while you work, just so that it's faster to work with. And maybe these flames can move even faster and die a bit sooner. So for this emitter life, I'll just set that to 0 0.05. 0 0.05, um, give them a speed scale of maybe nine. Cone spreading, let's do zero. And one thing that's slowing the fire down over time is this velocity fade over life, which means over time, the velocity transfer gets lower. So we just need to raise this back up. And as you'll notice, now the fire is moving faster the whole time, right? So if you wanna check what it will look like with smoke, you can just go under simulation, combustion, and here you have generated smoke, so you can crank that up much higher, actually. You can go above 100%, you can do maybe 250%, and now you're giving birth to way more smoke. If it's a bit hard to see, we can just make the ground uniform color, make it almost pure black, right? So we're starting to get somewhere. I'm just going to copy this emitter five more times. So I'll just, you know, copy this control C, control V, connect that to my emitters, grab the thing, um, Q to move, move it over here, W to rotate, rotate it this way and move it inside. So I'm going to repeat this, you know, four more times. I'm going to pause the video and come back. All right. So I've copied the emitters over all around and this is what I have right now. So now we can just work on improving the shading. So you can go into the shading note. Under scattering, you can boost the flame contribution. So this is how much light the flames contribute to the smoke, right? So that it will nicely um, brighten it up. Then we can go under flames. And here you can increase shaping by flames, again, to make the fire brighter. And if you feel like the flames are reaching too far, like maybe they could die sooner, we can just increase the flame density minimum limit. Right, and that's gonna cut off the lowest density of the fire as you increase this. So I can, you know, completely remove the fire, but we just wanna cut off the ends basically to get something like this. We can also tweak the color of the flames with the color gradient. So I can grab this orange color toward the end, make it less saturated to make the flames less yellow. So I think I want the hottest parts to be more white, but I want the edges to be uh, more orange. So I'll just make these darker. Uh, next, we can add a light. So under shading, you can drag from lights and make a new point light. And let's just give it like an orangey fire color. You can boost the intensity, you know, see what kind of an effect that has and make it less saturated. Also, these models are looking kind of bad. So under import, you can scroll down to rendering albedo and just make them pure black that just looks the best in the end because there's no actual textures or shading in embergen yet or maybe just like a very dark gray so it looks illuminated something like this right so if i hit r to reset i'd say we are almost there i'd say i wouldn't mind even more smoke and like a thicker smoke so under simulation combustion, we can crank up the generated smoke to 300%. Let's lower the smoke dissipation to maybe 15%. So it should start really filling up with some thick, heavy smoke. Under shading, um, scattering, you can lower the direct light scattering to control how much light travels through the smoke to make the smoke darker. We can also increase the smoke shadow density to make it look mo more opaque and thicker. You know, it can also increase the directional light intensity and maybe lower the elevation so it's more like a sunset lighting and it's going to make the shadows more pronounced. Also, under shading smoke, um, we can give it just um, single color for the smoke and just make it almost pure black, so like very dark gray. And you can make the ground um, just slightly gray and it's gonna make the light that's illuminating it more pronounced. So, you know, something like this. We're almost there, just final touches now. We can go under shading, rendering, and, you know, play with the Raymart sharpening. 
so you can sharpen the smoke you can see what that's doing you know so don't overdo it maybe 250 percent and then under the scene note we can go to bloom and you can give the scene just a little bit of bloom it's gonna make the flame sort of glow one and 0 0.65 and under volume processing you can set the volume post process to sharpen and just you know play with the additional sharpening here so I think actually the default of 100% is pretty good so we're getting some really nice large-scale detailed smoke and I think I just wouldn't mind the flames being even brighter especially in this hottest area here so under the color gradient we can desaturate the flames a bit more which will make them more white and make them look hotter right so I'm keeping the resolution low to make it real time for you guys while I'm recording this tutorial before you would export this as a VDB into your external package Blender, Cinema 4D, 3ds Max you can go under simulation and just crank up the upscaling to times two it's gonna make it slower in your viewport but you're gonna get some much more beautiful detail inside of the simulation so that's something you can do right before exporting I'll just set it to none for now and you can hit B to hide the simulation box find your camera angle hit R and this will be our final result so I hope that you learned a lot in this tutorial we basically covered the whole pipeline from importing models to adding emitters with GPU particles, particle injection. We covered some shading, post-processing, color gradients. Now, if you'd like to keep learning Embergen with me, I have a bunch more tutorials on the channel. There's a whole playlist, Thanos portal, and some other tutorials that you can check out. And I will be uploading more in the coming weeks. So be sure to subscribe. If you found this tutorial helpful, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.